Hi there, this is a series of topic videos on inflation and in this revision tutorial we're going to be focusing on some of the key causes of inflation. A reminder that inflation is a sustained increase in the general price level and the rate of inflation is the annual percentage change in prices. This is an updated chart from the IMF and their World Economic Outlook showing the countries in 2015 with the highest rates of inflation. All of them have inflation of more than 10%. Look how inflation has taken off in Venezuela, a country with inflation of over 150%. In any normal circumstances, inflation of 50% in Ukraine will be the world's highest. Not in 2015. Venezuela is a country with a deep economic crisis to address. So what are the main causes of inflation? It's quite good to make a distinction between demand pull and cost push. So let's look at the two. Demand pull inflation is typically caused by there being an excess of aggregate demand for goods and services. We tend to associate demand pull inflation with economies that are going through a boom phase in the economic cycle. There could be a monetary or a credit boom fueling consumer spending, for example. And price rises tend to go up more quickly when an economy is getting close to its full capacity level. In other words, aggregate supply is becoming inelastic. Demand pull inflation is most likely to happen when there is a positive output gap. In other words, the level of demand for goods and services, aggregate demand, is greater than the economy's normal potential GDP. Cost push inflation is on the supply side of the economy. and It happens when producers of goods and services experience an increase in their costs and they decide to increase their prices in order to protect their profitability. Classic examples of cost push inflation include increasing wage costs, perhaps higher prices for important raw materials and component parts, and also an increase in the cost of imported goods and services, perhaps due to a fall in the exchange rate. There's also an aspect of inflation that's under the control either of the government or of the regulatory agencies. So, for example, a change in the price capping formula for the water industry and the regional monopolies can directly affect the costs of water bills going into households and businesses. Same too for changes in indirect taxes such as VAT or perhaps some government subsidies which might, which might help to bring down inflation. Increasingly of course governments are using environmental taxes to affect people's behaviour from the carbon tax to the landfill duty to the sugar tax for example. So environmental taxes affecting businesses will also affect inflation, particularly if they pass on those charges to the consumer. So this slide looks at the important distinction between demand pull and cost push inflation. It's quite important to recognise that once inflation uh, is, it becomes established in an economy, it can be quite hard to get rid of. In other words, we see a rise in inflation expectations. When inflation goes up, let's say from 2% to 5%, Agents in the economy, that could be businesses, it could be individual workers, it could be banks, are going to change perhaps their expectations of what inflation will be in the year or two ahead. Workers, for example, might decide to bid for higher wages. Banks might decide to increase the interest rate on loans. And both agents are trying to protect the real value, either of their wage or the interest they're getting from lending out. So inflation can be affected significantly by changes in inflation expectations and that's worth bearing in mind when you think about causation. Here are some factors affecting inflationary pressure in the economy. House price is not always directly included in CPI but if property prices are increasing at a pretty fast rate consumer wealth may go up and that could in theory lead to an increase in consumer spending and borrowing and perhaps depending on the output gap uh, demand pull inflation risk. Another factor could be an external cause of inflation. So, for example, if oil prices go up, this feeds into higher costs for transport companies, for airlines, for companies making plastic packaging, for example. And that will be a cause of cost push inflationary factors. The exchange rate is quite important. When the pound falls, for example, the cost of imported oil and energy and food and drink goes up. And that can feed directly into the consumer price index. So a falling exchange rate tends to see, or tends to cause, an increase in cost push inflation. And if the lower, more competitive exchange rate leads to a substantial increase in exports, then there could also be, potentially, 
demand pull inflation risk from that side as well. And of course, keep in mind that inflation is nearly always a monetary phenomenon. So in countries where there is a fast growth of money and credit, for example, from the banking system, financing increasing consumer spending on goods and services, that too can cause some demand pull inflation. So cost push, how do we show that on a diagram? We've said that cost push inflation when, is when firms respond to their higher costs by choosing to raise price to protect their profits. That's quite important. They're trying to protect their profit margins. Uh, unit labour costs might have gone up. Component prices may have increased. Exchange rate may have fallen or perhaps the business is, is being affected by, for example, an increase in an environmental tax. Those higher costs cause an inward shift of aggregate supply from AS1 to AS2 and can lead to higher prices, as shown on my diagram. That's cost push inflation. Demand pull inflation is on the other side of the macro economy and is a result of an outward shift of aggregate demand, especially when aggregate supply is inelastic. You can see from this diagram that AD1 shifts to AD2, the general price level goes up, aggregate supply fairly inelastic, and that can cause some demand pull inflation. I think the key point is that with demand pull inflation, the economy is perhaps running up against capacity constraints. Producers are using the opportunity of high demand to raise their price to make more profit. And we associate demand pull inflation when an economy has a positive output gap. There's a separate topic video on the output gap, so just Google, Google search it or just search our own web channel on YouTube. So we've looked at some of the causes of inflation and in particular we've made a distinction between demand pull and cost push inflation. We've also said that inflation expectations really do matter, particularly when agents in the economy think that inflation will be higher in the future. Thanks for joining this one. I hope that was useful. More topics on inflation to come. See you soon.